Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're, we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 49 today, Ill-Motivated Dhritarashtra. So in the previous chapter, Lord Krishna had met with Akrura. He'd gone to Akrura's home in Mathura. After Akrura had gone to Vrindavan and brought Krishna and Balaram to Mathura, then, in progress. then Lord Krishna was invited by Akrura to come to his home. So when he went to Akrura's home, at that time he asked Akrura, he said, I'd like you to go to Hastinapur to see what's happening with the Pandavas. Alright, so, so Akrura, we hear, we read the book. Thus ordered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, Akrura visited Hastinapur, said to be the site of what is now New Delhi. <coughs> the part of New Delhi, still known as Indraprastra, is accepted by people in general as the old capital of the Pandavas. So, the word Hasti means elephant, and so Hastinapur means a place where there are many elephants. And to keep an elephant, it costs a lot of money. You have to have a lot of, you have to get a, quite a lot of food to feed an elephant every day. And you have to take care of them. You have to take them for a walk every day. They have to go for exercise. You can't just keep them tied up all day. So in the past, these kings would keep many elephants and they'd keep horses and they'd keep many chariots and they had like this, they showed their wealth. Just like today people have cars. In the past, people had elephants and horses and chariots. เอ่อเหมือนกันในสมัยก่อนเนี่ย 
So it said the kings of Hastinapur, they were like the kings of the whole world. Hastinapur was like the, the, the strongest capital in, in the world. So the kings of Hastinapur, they were like ruling the world. And these kings, of course, they were also they were guided by Brahmanas. That was the Vedic culture. The kings would rule, but they would be guided how to rule by the Brahmanas. And so Akrura came to Hastinapur and he saw how it was very opulent and he went to meet the king. The king at that time was Dhritarashtra. And he, when he met Dhritarashtra, he saw Bhishma was also there. Grandfather Bhishma was sitting with Dhritarashtra. So uh, Ak Akrura was able to meet both Bhishma and Dhritarashtra. And then he went and he, he met Vidura and then Kunti. And Kunti is a relative of Akrura. They're cousins. So in this way, uh, Akrura was meeting many different people, different relatives and friends. And he met all the important people. He met Dronacharya and his son Ashwatthama and he met the Pandava brothers also. So everybody they, everyone knew Akrura a little bit and they had some affection for him. They were very nice and they would welcome him and they would ask how is all the relatives and he would ask also about their relatives. So he was given good respect coming to visit Hastinapur. People were very nice to him. And we should also note that because Lord Krishna had told him to come to Hastinapur, it means that Lord Krishna trusted him to be very intelligent and to deal with the situation in a very diplomatic manner. Actually, Dhritarashtra shouldn't really have been the king. Dhritarashtra was born blind, so a blind person could not become the king. So that it was his younger brother, he had a younger brother, Dhritarashtra's younger brother was called Pandu, and Pandu became the king. But Pandu died and his sons were, he had five sons, but the five sons, the Pandavas, they were still very young, they couldn't become the king. So that meant Dhritarashtra had to become the king, although he was blind. So, 
แล้วเสร็จทีนี้กษัตริย์ก็ต้องมีคนมาขึ้นครองกษัตริย์ปรากฏว่าตอนนั้นเนี่ยลูกๆของพันดูทั้งห้าเนี่ยยังเด็กมากยังไม่บรรลุนิติภาวะในการที่จะขึ้นของราบได้เลยให้ดิตราสตร์เนี่ยเป็นกษัตริย์แทนไปก่อน But the problem was when d h r i t a r a s t r a became the king, he wanted his own sons that they would become the kings after him. And they were very envious of the five Pandavas because the five Pandavas were they had they were very great warriors. They were very strong and they were very humble. And they were very saintly. They had all good qualities. So the sons of Duryodhan, sons of Dhritarashtra, headed by Duryodhan, they were very envious of the Pandavas. ก็เลยทําให้ลูกของดิตราสตร์เนี่ยมีความอิจฉาริษยาต่อพวกเขาเป็นอย่างมากซึ่งนําโดย and and even d h r i t a r a s t r a he was also not fair to the Pandavas แม้แต่ดิตราสตร์เนี่ยเขาก็ไม่มีความยุติธรรมให้กับฝั่งของพันดาบะเลย even though Bhishma grandfather Bhishma and Vidura they had all told d h r i t a r a s t r a To deal equally and to be fair to, them, but d h r i t a r a s t r a didn't follow their teachings. Instead, d h r i t a r a s t r a got influenced by his oldest son Duryodhan. And Duryodhan, he was always influenced by people like Karn and Shakuni. Shakuni and Karn. So they were trying to kill the Pandavas. Hmm. So Akrura he came to Hastinapur and he he had to stay there for a few months to find out everything about the whole situation. Akrura เนี่ยต้องมาอยู่ที่นั่นสักพักหนึ่งเลยเพื่อที่จะรู้ว่าเกิดอะไรขึ้นมา So, Akrura found out from Kunti and Vidura about all the bad things that Dhritarashtra's sons had done to the Pandavas. The Pandavas had all the good qualities. They were very good chatriyas, and they were very responsible. And they were always kind to the people. But this only made this only made Duryodhan and the sons of Dhritarashtra made them more envious of the Pandavas. ซึ่งคุณสมบัติพิเศษเหล่านี้เนี่ยมันทำให้ยิ่งทำให้ดุยดอนแล้วก็ลูกลูกของดิตราสตร์เนี่ยมีความอิจฉาต่อพวกเขา and they even tried to kill them they tried to poison them they put poison in their food แล้วเขาก็พยายามฆ่าด้วยหลายวิธีการหนึ่งในวิธีนั้นก็คือการวางยาพิษในอาหาร but by the mercy of Krishna they were saved So Akrura was one of the cousins. He was like a cousin to Kunti, so they had a, a nice relationship. So Kunti approached Akrura, and she is asking Akrura that 
What about my father and mother? Are they asking about me? Do they think of me? Do they remember me? And what about my mother and my brothers and sisters and friends? Do they ever ask for me? And then Kunti is a relative, she's the aunt of Lord Krishna. So she said, does Krishna, who is the personality of Godhead, is very kind to his devotees, does he remember me and my sons? And does Balar, Lord Balaram remember us? Actually, Kunti was in a very difficult position. She was, the, all the people around her were very nasty and envious people. But she had no husband. Her husband had died. King Pandu had died. And she'd been left to take care of the five Pandavas. Pandu had two wives, actually. There was Kunti and Madri. But when Pandu died, then Madri also died. She also gave up her body. She entered into the fire with Pandu. And uh, Kunti was supposed to stay and take care of the five Pandavas, but it was so difficult because Dhritarashtra's sons were always trying to kill them. So Kunti's position was just like just like if you have a deer in the forest and it's surrounded by tigers. You know, it's very dangerous. The tigers all want to kill the deer, to eat the deer. So Kunti's position was like that. She was like an innocent animal surrounded by these fierce animals. But because Kunti is a devotee of Krishna, she would always think of Krishna and she thought that Krishna will come and save her. So when Akrura came, then she asked Akrura, is Lord Krishna going to come sometime to see us, to free us? And Kunti is a great devotee of Krishna, so she offered prayers to Krishna. When Akrura came, she offered prayers to Krishna. She prayed to Krishna, My dear Krishna, you are the supreme mystic, the super soul of the universe. You're, you're the real well-wisher of the whole universe. And she prayed to Krishna that although you're far away from me, still I surrender to your lotus feet. 
ถึงแม้ว่าพระรองค์เนี่ยจะอยู่ไกลแสนไกลจากข้าพเจ้าถึงกระนั้นข้าพเจ้าก็ภาวนาขอเซโลลาบเบื้องพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระองค์ And she told Krishna, she said, "I have to bring up my five children without any husband. They have no father, and I can understand the only shelter is your lotus feet." And it's only by your mercy that we can get free of birth and death. You are the super soul, and you are the master of all yogis. And I can only offer my obeisances unto you, and surrender to you, and ask you to accept me as your devotee. So, although Krishna wasn't present there, he was far away. From Kunti, but still Kunti is offering such nice prayers to him, just like he was right in front of her. So Krishna doesn't have to be present everywhere. Of course, he is everywhere, but he doesn't have to be present everywhere. But still, we can pray to him. So we just have to surrender unto him sincerely. And Krishna will hear our prayers, and he will answer our prayers. So while Kunti was praying to Krishna like this, then she 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 began to cry loudly in front of Akrura. So at that time, Vidura was also present, and both Akrura and Vidura were very kind to Kunti. And they comforted her. They told Kunti, "You don't have to worry, because your sons are all very special sons. They're not ordinary sons." That they're they're born from the great demigods, so you don't have to worry. Yudhisthira is born from Yamaraj, and Arjuna is born from Indra, and Bhima is born from Vayu. And Nakula and Sahadev, they're born from the Ashwini Kumars. So they're very powerful. No ordinary, no ordinary people can defeat them. So Vidura and Akrura, they told Kunti, "You don't have to worry. Your sons will be safe." And 
So Akrura was re ready to go back to report to Krishna to tell him everything about the situation, about Kunti and the Pandavas. But before he went back, he first wanted to go and see Dhritarashtra. He wanted to give some good advice to Dhritarashtra. Because he knew Dhritarashtra is, he's, he only thinks about his own sons, he doesn't think about the Pandavas. Actually, Dhritarashtra is the uncle of the Pandavas and he should be taking care of them because the Pandavas have no father. But Dhritarashtra is only thinking his sons, he's not thinking about the Pandavas. So Akrura came to see Dhritarashtra, he saw Dhritarashtra was sitting with his friends and relatives. And so Akrura began to address him and he, he called Dhritarashtra by the name Vaichitravirya. Vaichitravirya means the son of Vichitravirya. Yes, the first the first name is Vaichit Vaichitravirya. Mean, yeah, meaning it means the son of Vichitravirya. So Vichitravirya was the name of Dhritarashtra's father. But actually, actually, he wasn't really the father of Dhritarashtra because Vichitravirya died early without any children. So, in the past, it was a custom, especially for a king, if he dies without any, any, any children, then the brother can come and the brother can conceive a child in the womb of the wife on behalf of the, the dead king. So Vichitravirya, he died, but he had a brother, Vyasadev. Vyasadev was his brother. So Vyasadev was, he was called to come to, to give children in the womb of the wives of Vichitravirya. Vichitravirya had two wives. So Vyasadev came to give children in the womb of these two wives who had no children. So one child was, the first child was Dhritarashtra, was born blind because the, the wife was so afraid that when Vyasadeva came, because Vyasadeva was a great sage, so his body was all covered with hair and dirt and, you know, he wasn't very pure because he'd been living in the mountains and he came there and 
And, and when the queen saw it, she was very afraid, she closed her eyes. So because she closed her eyes, the result was the child was born blind. At the time of having the, conceiving the child, she closed her eyes. She didn't look at Vyasadeva because she was so afraid. So the child was born blind. <laughs> เวียสเดฟเนี่ยเป็นบุคคลที่เป็นนักพระศาสดาเนี่ยเค้าก็จะทําสมถะแล้วก็ปฏิบัติเพียรเนี่ยอยู่ในป่าแล้วก็เค้
ถ้าเกิดว่าเธอทำเช่นนั้นทุกคนก็จะชมเธอแล้วก็ว่าเธอดี So he Akura told Dhritarashtra. He said, "Just, just like uh, if if you treat the Pandavas, uh, if you if you treat the Pandavas like they're your subjects, then you should be fair to them. You should give them proper facility." <laughs> ปฏิบัติตนต่อพวกพันด้วยอย่างถูกต้องตามกฎหมายเนี่ยเธอก็ควรที่จะมาให้ความสะดวกสบายกับเขาตามที่เขาเนี่ยควรที่จะได้ You should think the Pandavas are also your sons, and you shouldn't do anything to harm them. You should want to protect them. แล้วก็ควรที่จะคิดว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยเป็นเหมือนกับบุตรของเธอด้วยเราไม่ควรที่จะคิดที่จะทําอะไรที่มันจะ But if you don't protect them, then you you get a very bad reputation for yourself. In the next life, also you have to go to hell. So Akrura told Dhritarashtra. Like this, that he should deal nicely with the Pandavas and be equal to them, like his own sons. But if Dhritar if Dhritarashtra is not good to them, then there will be there will be a fight between the two sides, and then the Pandavas will win, and all your sons will be killed. So Drita Akrura was predicting to Drita Rashtra what's going to happen in the future. So Akrura also told Drita Rashtra. He said, "No one can remain with us forever. Your fam, you can't keep your family with you together forever. We will all be separated in course of time." Every one of us has. We have to give up. Our... Everyone has to give up the body in course of time. So you may love your family, but that family will be separated in course of time. So Akrura was warning Dhritarashtra, "There's no, it doesn't make any sense to be so fit, to be so attached to your family." That is just ignorance to have so much affection for our family. We're all individuals eternally. So we take birth and we may come together in one family. But then we separate. Next life, we're not in one family. Next life will be another place. Everyone has to suffer and enjoy according to their past activities. Sometimes the father gets a lot of money by 
illegal means, and the son may take away all the money from the father. The father had to work very hard to get the money, and the son takes all the money away for himself to enjoy. Just like sometimes in the ocean, you get a, you get a small fish, and the, the small fish may eat the big fish. They eat the old big fish. And so we get money, you may get the money, you get the power, or you get the property, the house, and the other people take it away from you for their enjoyment. Just like in the past, there were great empires, there were great kings, there was the Roman Empire, there was the Greek Empire, even there was the British Empire, and they got money, but they, they didn't take care of it, they wasted it. So everyone has to suffer and enjoy according to his past activities. He may get a lot of money, a lot of wealth, and he may get it by lying and cheating and stealing, and he goes to hell for that. And his wife and his children, they will take all the money which the man worked hard to get. They will take it all for their spending. So we have to understand, we have to understand what is the proper way to live in this world. We have to live according to the laws of God. And we shouldn't try to get more than what is actually meant for us. So this way Akrura was telling Dhritarashtra that he was asking him, please be kind and think about the other people, don't just think only about your own children. Material happiness is just like a dream. It's very temporary. And we have to control the mind and senses, and we have to try to get spiritual advancement, Krishna consciousness. Mm. It's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, that it, if one is maybe may a karma yogi, a, a jnana yogi, or a 
mystic yogi, they'll never be peaceful because they have material desires. But if one is a bhakti yogi, then he can be peaceful because he doesn't want anything material. เอ่อบางทีตาได้อธิบายไว้ว่าถ้าเกิดว่าใครเป็นญาณโยกีหรือกรรมโยกีเนี่ยพวกเขาเนี่ยจะอืมจะไม่ได้ความสงบหรือความ
มุมอีกมุมมองหนึ่งก็สามารถมองได้ว่าเวลาเรามีความยึดติดทางโลกวัตถุเนี่ยดิฉันก็จะนำเอาสิ่งนั้นไป But at the same time, Dhritarashtra is also so attached to all his sons. It's a big burden. He had 100 sons, and so naturally he's very attached to them. So Dhritarashtra offered his obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He says it's very difficult to understand the material nature. If we're given things, but at the same time, They're taken away from us in course of time. So to understand the plan of the Supreme Lord is very difficult. He creates the material world. And he enters into the material world, and he ends the material world. He, he does everything through the three modes of material nature. And he enters into the heart of each and every living entity. And he's even he's even in the tiny atom. Nobody can understand the plan of the Supreme Lord. So in this way, Akrura was hearing from Dhritarashtra, and he could understand Dhritarashtra is not going to change his mind. He's not going to stop his way of trying to do harm to the Pandavas. He is going to continue to discriminate in favor of his own sons against the Pandavas. He won't see them equally. And so after all this, Akrura then he said goodbye to everybody in Hastinapur, and he went back to the. Kingdom of the Yadus. So Akrura came home, and he told Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram of what was happening in Hastinapur. And he told them also about Dhritarashtra's plans and what Dhritarashtra was going to do. So Akrura had been sent to Hastinapur by Krishna, and to to find out everything, and by the grace of Krishna. He, he he was successful. He found out everything. Of course, Lord Krishna must. Lord Krishna knows everything. He didn't need to send Akrura there, but he wanted. 
that a crew should go there and actually tell him everything. Lord Krishna is the super soul in everyone's heart. He doesn't depend on that, but still he wanted Akrura to go there and do this service for him. So this is inconceivable, this is the inconceivable pastimes of Lord Krishna. That although he knows everything, still he sends a Krura there to find out. <laughs> okay, so we will stop here. That's the end of the chapter. We will ask if there's any questions. Oh, we can see the next chapter we're going to read about Krishna erecting the Dwarka fort. So I was wondering because, you know, Krishna sent Akrura to go there to Hastinapur. So that means Akrura was coming from Mathura. He was in Mathura at the time. So, from Mathura they had to go to Delhi. Hastinapur was in Delhi. Oh. But the next chapter we're going to read about Krishna moving everybody from, from Mathura, they're going to move to Dwarka. <laughs> <laughs> Previously, the Krishna had gone to Mathura, right? He went to Mathura, he killed Kamsa in Mathura. And Akrura had come to bring him. Akrura had come from Mathura to, to Vrindavan to take Krishna and Balaram to Mathura for the wrestling match. <laughs> Krishna and so Krishna had killed Kamsa and won the wrestling match and uh, then Krishna put his uh, Ugrasena on the throne, became the king and they were staying in Mathura. So they stayed in Mathura for some time, but then Krishna is going to move everyone. We'll read in the next chapter how Krishna moves everyone to Dwarka. So from, from Mathura to Hastinapur is very near, it's not very far, but to go to, to Dwarka is very far. But Krishna wants to protect all of his family, so he moved everyone to Dwarka. All right, so are there any questions? Yes, Yes. Shaya Vishnu Priya. Yes, Pramash. Hare Krishna. Then, Lord, by now, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sila Prabhupan. Ajanaha. I'm having tea. Been doing TP and yoga. Come home, Prabhupan. Ajanaha. He and wa, Mankava, Prabhupan Gawa. Jesus, 
คําถามพี่คือพี่อะสงสัยว่าแล้วทําไมหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยจีซัสไม่เผยแพร่เกี่ยวกับปักกวานหรือว่าเป็นคําสอนของวายชินาแต่ว่าสร้างศาสนาขึ้นมาใหม่อะค่ะอืมโอเคค่ะเกิดชีชีริตอินวันเพลสเวอร์เสียบอวันเอ็กซ์เพลนเดตล่าเดตจีจัสเวนท์ทูจักรนาปุรีและเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรีแล้วเขาทำงานที่ลอจักรนาปุรี The devotion towards Lord Jagannath to others. Why he create uh, Christianity? Well, he has to teach according to the qualification of the people to understand. หลักก็คือท่านเนี่ยจะต้องสอนหรือว่าให้คำสอนที่มันเข้ากับคนในสมัยนั้น He was just teaching them to love, love God with all thy heart and all thy soul, and love thy neighbor, and don't commit adultery. He was teaching them very basic th things, moral things. สิ่งที่ท่านสอนเนี่ยก็คือเป็นสิ่งพื้นฐานมากมากก็คือสอนว่าให้เราเนี่ยต้องรักพระเจ้ารักเพื่อนบ้านแล้วก็หวังดีกับ But still, on the basis of what he was teaching them, they crucified him. But to me, if he taught something that is easy, or that is done easily, then the people in the time were killed. They were killed. So it's it's not an easy thing to teach people. And it's not an easy thing to teach people. But Lord Jesus was teaching people in a country which was not very civilized. They were not very, you know, they were not very elevated people. Bhakti is for people who have a lot of culture and who can accept God. But these people he was preaching to, they were not very pious or religious people. <laughs> Archana, something wrong with your mic. You can read. You we know even after after Lord Jesus passed away, and then there were followers of Jesus. They they would feed them to lions. They would put them in the arena with wild lions and let let lions come and eat them. So you know you have to understand the culture, the kind of people you're talking to, you're preaching to, and. You have to know what you can preach and how much you can preach. Just like Lord Buddha, Lord Buddha was also preaching to atheistic people. They couldn't believe in God, so he didn't teach them about God. So he just taught them: just try to be a good person, don't kill, don't harm others. Then he just taught them: just try to be a good person, don't kill, don't harm others. Then he just taught them: just try to be a good person, don't kill, don't harm others. Then he just taught them: just try to be a good person, don't kill, don't harm others. Then he just taught them: just try to be a good person, don't k
And he taught them, follow me, just follow me, do like I do. He didn't teach about the soul, he didn't teach about God, because the people couldn't understand. They were not so advanced to be able to understand. Just like if you talk to little children, if you talk to them about advanced mathematics, they cannot understand because they're only little children. They don't have the ability to understand higher things. So we have to know the level of the people, the level of the audience, and talk to them at that level so that they can understand. But you have to understand bhakti, bhakti is the highest thing, it's the highest thing. You can't present bhakti just to everyone. It's only a few people can understand the value of bhakti. Mm -hmm. You understand Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um Ajana Hapimi come down from the Minga. Yeah, now that he um they didn't cast Baba Gita Kakuru Maharaja P uh Dai Lua Bang Sun may know how Kong Baba Gita Kap um Kam Son Kong uh Nai Pata Bidok. มีบางอย่างสอดคล้องกับถ้าเราจะสามารถเอ่อเคยแพ้ไปได้มั้ยว่ามันกับว่าเอ่อหลอดบูด้าเนี่ยประยุกต์จากบักวากีตามาเป็
He doesn't say surrender unto Buddha, he says surrender to Krishna. And he says, become a servant, be a servant. Krishna is a master and we are servants. But in Buddhism, everybody wants to become the Buddha. So there is difference. No Buddhist is thinking to be the servant of Buddha. Everybody wants to become the Buddha. There are some things common, some things, you know, like, you know, be vegetarian, be good to people, be honest, be pure, be clean. But if you go deeper into it, if you go deeper into it, you'll see there's a lot of difference. So you're better to just stick with the Bhagavad Gita. You just, you just study the Bhagavad Gita, you teach the Bhagavad Gita. That's the words of Krishna. That's the exact words of Krishna. And Krishna said, there is, there is no truth. There is no truth superior to me. He is the highest truth and everything else rests on him. So we, we want to teach people bhakti yoga begins with hearing and chanting. Hearing about Krishna and chanting the names of Krishna and the pastimes of Krishna. That is bhakti yoga. Hmm. Okay. Yes. อาจารย์อาคาพี่มีคําถามเพิ่มเติมนิดนึงค่ะที่เมื่อกี้เอ่อมหาราชพูดว่าเอ่อมีพระพุทธเจ้าหลายพระองค์อันเนี้ยพี
the many Buddhas that you you mentioned earlier, it means that the, they are not the Supreme Lord, but they are the one who carry the message of the Supreme Lord to the people. No. Can we? No. ไม่ไม่ไม่ใช่นะคะโอเคค่ะโอเคค่ะ thank you Guru Maharaj for your explanation Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Jolene has a question yes Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances um I just have a uh, two question um, I wonder when you mentioned that um, Yudhisthira was son of Yamaraj, Arjuna was son of Indra, not Indra. Why is it that the Pandu brothers who were of high birth needs to take birth and go into hiding? Um, why? Why is such? Why is it that the events is as such? Why uh -huh. do they need to suffer? being of uh, high birth they were sons of great personalities yes well they were born as in the kshatriya family in the family of king but as fa in the family of kings they were forced into a gambling match and the gambling match was a, it was it was rigged it was not a fair gambling match and in the result of the gambling match, they lost everything. And one of the wagers was that if they lost, they had to go and live in the forest for 14 years. So that's why they went into the forest to live for 14 years. It was a wager and they lost the wager. So they had to go into the forest and live there for 14 years. Um, and, and my second question is that um, if uh, when we leave our body and uh, uh, if we have some inheritance to our family members and uh, they, they do it for maybe um, mediating, um, they do bad things with it, are we subject to the karmic reaction of the money that we left behind even though we, we have left our body? Mm. I, I, I doubt it. I don't think you would get the reactions, but you give your money to these people, you give your money to other people and they use it in bad ways. Yeah, well actually, yeah, you would. That's because that's like charity in the mode of ignorance. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, it describes that there's charity in goodness, passion and ignorance. So if you give charity to people who use the money for sinful things, then we get reactions for that. So we're careful. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for uh, the answers. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Archana? Okay, good. I quickly translate that. Matadina has two questions. The first question is, if the ถ้าเกิดว่าพวกพันธุ์ดาวเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยเป็นลูกจากของยมราชจากพระอินทร์อะไรเงี้ยมาเกิดเนี่ยแล้วทําไมบุคลิกภ
Krishna Guru Maharaj, Pritik Sat Mahamala Bizan says, Oh Guru Stushila Prabhupada. And the question is, mm, if Krishna is a uh, Sarvagya, uh, he knows um, all about uh, everything. Why he sent Akrura to Pandavas? Thank you. Yes, well, I, I brought that up at the end of the class. I said, Krishna knows everything. Why did he send Akrura there? Well, he wants Akrur to personally go there and see for himself. Okay. Akrura is a devotee and he's a relative. And so he wants a crewer to understand the situation so that when the battle of Kurukshetra takes place, then a crewer can understand why the battle of Kurukshetra is taking place. <laughs> So we should understand that Krishna sent Akrura there not just for his benefit but for Akrura's benefit. Mm, yes. <laughs> right. Okay, Shaya, I want to come back to your question again. You were talking about these people. You said all of these masters, are they teaching uh, according to the, the the desire of the Supreme Lord. Mm. They're teaching something material. Of course, what they're teaching is not actually spiritual. But it's material. Some, you know, some piety, some goodness is there. And they give a lot of importance to austerity also. So it's, it's not spiritual, but it's material piety. So is it for the good of the people? Well, it doesn't save them. From going in, because the problem is they're still in the material world. They're not going to get out of the world of birth and death. <laughs> Archana, your voice is gone again. Okay. Archana, your voice is gone again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What? Yes, we can hear you now. What do you do? Are you touching something? No, Rev. But I got some message from Facebook. I don't know if it, that might be the reason. Well, maybe you should turn it off when you're doing this. Yeah, I share this from my Facebook also. I share Facebook Live. So, okay. Now, now it's okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, ก็บอกว่าความรู้ที่พวกเขาให้เนี่ยมันเป็นความรู้ที่ไม่ได้ให้บุคคลเนี่ยออกไปจากวัฏจักรแห่งการเวียนว่ายตายเกิด So the real problem is to get free of birth and death. เพราะฉะนั้นการแก้ปัญหาที่แท้จริงหรือว่าปัญหาที่แท้จริงในชีวิตของเราก็คือ
And I don't think their teachings are going to help you get out of birth and death. อะไรกิชนะอาจารย์ค่ะคือที่เมื่อก่อนพี่เคยถามเมื่อก่อนพี่ดิสคัสเรื่องนี้ไปว่าเหมือนกับว่าทําไมเอ่อเราถึงมี